$2,800 for the lot. $2,800? I can get more than that for the ring alone. Get it. Give me the money. Sign your name and address here. Anybody else gets caught stealing, they go to jail. You operate under a license. You were recommended to me. But I'll tell the world I'll never do business here again. Police department. taken an unexpected turn for pleasure. A scheduled hearing in the corporation's suit of Hines versus Hardesty had been postponed. And I'd managed to substitute Maris versus Bates, Sally Bates, who plays a very good game of tennis. But then the afternoon took another unexpected turn. I was afraid I wouldn't catch you. Your secretary told me where you were parked. She did? Don't blame her. I practically forced it out of her. I'm uh, Conrad Reese, vice president of the Culinary Workers Union Local. Can't our business wait till another day, Mr. Reese? Not unless you uh, think an innocent man should suffer another day. Fred Reynolds, a, uh, a bartender in our local, has been arrested for selling stolen jewelry. But did he sell it? Yes. But I don't need a man who can get him off of the light sentence. I need a man who can talk to this boy and know that he's innocent and prove it. Now, I know Fred Reynolds. I got him into the union, and I have... Uh, Mr. Reese, uh, please, don't bring up the obvious. I know that simply belonging to our union doesn't cloak a man with angelic qualities. And I admit I'm concerned because one of our members has been accused of a serious crime. But I'm like you, Maris. I work with people. And I think I can tell the good ones from the bad ones. Uh, do you have anything better to do this afternoon than talk to Reynolds? Uh, just in case I'm right. Mr. Reese, I'll not only talk to Reynolds, I'm about to join your union. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Maris. of an arm signal? You know, we got laws to deal with people like you. Well, uh, listen, I won't let it happen again if you'll give me a break next time, sir. I'm afraid I can't do that, but I know where you can get a lawyer. You know, I often wondered how you got such a large clientele. Uh, listen, I thought you were supposed to be in court today. I was, a tennis court. Where are you going? Oh, things were kind of slow this afternoon, so I thought I'd grab a bite of lunch and then uh, check on the incident of crime at the ballpark. Spotted plants at the ballpark? Oh, that. Oh, well, that, uh... Now, uh, that's, uh, for the wife of one of the boys. Wife of one of the boys? Yes. She's in the hospital. Oh. Uh, listen, about the ballpark, uh, you interested? No, I passed better off than that. But I am interested in one of your prisoners, Fred Reynolds. Oh, well, you won't be when you heard his story. You know, Reynolds admits that he sold the jewelry to a pawnbroker for $2,800. Now, first he wouldn't say anything at all. Then he said he bought the stuff for $400 from a customer who comes in the place where he works as a bartender. Then he didn't know who the customer was, couldn't describe him, so in addition to being a thief, he's a very unconvincing liar. How'd you catch him? The pawnbroker turned him in. He had Reynolds sign his name and address on a form. 
Why did the pawnbroker call you after he bought the jewelry? And why did Reynolds give his correct name and address? Uh, you just pinpointed a hole in the theory. Well, I promised I'd talk to Reynolds, and I'd like to see his file. Will you arrange it? Okay. It's your afternoon. Mr. Reynolds? My name is Maris, Herbert Maris. Conrad Reese asked me to talk to you. You a lawyer? Yes. Where'd you get the $400? What $400? The 400 that you said you paid for the jewelry. I saved it. Saved. Hey. You told the police that you took the $2,800 you got from the pawnbroker to pay a gambling debt. Now you already had $400. Why didn't you use that? That doesn't make sense. What was the name of the bookie you went to? Are you my lawyer or are you a cop? Whose side are you on, anyway? I'm not a cop and I'm not yet sure which side I'm on. Oh, you sit down. Did you know that the people that were robbed had dinner in your restaurant that night? Yes. And when they got home from dinner, they found their house was ransacked. Well, I worked straight through until 2 o'clock in the morning that night. You're charged with selling stolen goods, not burglary. And on present evidence, you're going to be found guilty. Now, why'd you give the pawnbroker your correct name and address? I had no reason not to. Mr. Maris? I'll take an oath. I didn't know that jewelry was stolen. Now, that much I believe. You decide to tell me all the truth. I may be able to help you. Herb, the next time I take the afternoon off, I'm ignoring all calls from headquarters. This will only take a minute. Look at the bright side, John. You're indispensable. I'd much rather be dispensable and see the ball game. As a matter of fact, I've missed the first two innings. I noticed the report in Reynolds' file stated that the couple that owned the jewelry had been in the Golden Grill several times for drinks, but this was the first time they'd been there for dinner. So they were robbed twice in one night. What's the point, Herb? You didn't come down here to tell me what's in Reynolds' file. The Golden Grill has to figure in here somewhere with Reynolds. Agreed. The people came in to have drinks a couple of times. They spent money like they had it. Then Reynolds waited for his opportunity. And the night they had dinner, he sent somebody over to loot their house. He's guilty, Herb. Admittedly, he sold stolen goods. The question is, did he do it knowingly? And what about the couple? Did they seem to feel there was a tie-in? Listen, the only thing they felt at the Golden Grill was no pain. The manager bought them several after-dinner drinks, so they enjoyed the charm and atmosphere and hospitality of the place. I think I'll sample some of that hospitality on my way home. Thanks a lot, John. I'm not too early, am I? No, sir. The bar opens at 5. How long will you be, sir? 15 or 20 minutes. All right. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I wish I'd worn a hat. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. That's for uh, 3 or 8 o'clock. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. I'll have the tallest, coolest, wettest drink you can make. That kind of a day. You know Fred Reynolds? Yeah. He comes on, or used to come on, an hour after I did. Are you a friend of yours? I'm his attorney. Well, I hope you get him off, Mr. Maris. He's a nice kid. I was surprised to hear he got into trouble. You remember seeing him examining any jewelry with a customer? No, sir. <laughs> and you can see that you couldn't lay a handful of jewelry on this bar without attracting uh, attention. Do you recall any customer at any time who may have sold or tried to sell any jewelry in here? Oh, no, sir. Uh, you see, our clientele is mostly uh, old mainline society and well-to-do young executives and uh, these uh, young ladies. Is the owner here? No, but the manager is, if that'll help. She's over there with the phone. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Yes. All right, fine. I have that time for three and eight, sir. Bye. Excuse me. My name is Herbert Maris. I'm defending Fred Reynolds. Could I talk to you for a minute? Oh, certainly. I'm Gloria Dallas. Let's sit down, shall we? Thank you. 
You're defending Fred Reynolds? I'm looking into it. Is the owner here today? He seldom is. Well, you're not trying to connect him with Fred Reynolds. Mr. Hodges uh, plays golf days and gin rummy nights, and between the two, he loses more money in a week than Fred Reynolds would steal in it. Your drink, sir. Thank you. I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I just meant to say that Mr. Hodges is well off. I understand. Do you think it's just a coincidence that the jewelry was stolen while the victims were having dinner here and that it was later found in Fred Reynolds' possession? Oh, it had to be coincidence. Fred was behind the bar all night long. He couldn't have taken it. You believe that Reynolds bought the jewelry from the customer? I'd like to, but I don't know when it could have happened without my seeing it. Mr. Maris, there are two places where a restaurant can give away the profits, the bar and the kitchen. My eyes are on both all night long. But you don't mind giving drinks away. The lady that was robbed said that you treated them to several after-dinner drinks. Well, a free drink sometimes takes a sting off of a big check. I do it frequently. It's just good business. What's your personal opinion of Fred Reynolds? He's been working here only a month. He made a nice appearance. Customers seemed to like him. He did his work well. That's all I knew about him. That's all I cared about. Was Mr. Hodges here the night of the burglary? Back to him. No, he wasn't, and I don't know where he was. I'm his manager, not his wife. Or anybody's wife. No, I've, I've taken up a good deal of your time. Thank you very much. Pleasure. But it wasn't pleasure. Come back sometime when you're not working. Do you have a phone I could use? Certainly, there's one at the end of the bar. Thanks. Could I use the phone, please? Yes, sir. I guess I was disconnected. You mean you're just going to ignore fate? No, but I, uh, I think I'll give it another chance. Well, okay. But if you decide to let destiny run its course, I'll be down at the other end of the bar. You forgot your drink, sir. Oh, thanks. Buy the little lady a drink, Lou. I wish I were with you. The game was a bust. We lost. You know, it's a funny thing, Herb. I was just thinking about you. Well, it's fate, John. Just fate. I think I just dialed the wheel of fortune. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, it means you're part of my destiny. I can't explain now. I'll do that later. Right now, I'm interested in Hodges, the owner of the grill. He wasn't here the night of the burglary. Mm-hmm. Oh, we checked him out. He's clean. Has Reynolds had any visitors? Oh, uh, yes. Reese. There's union representative and Gloria Dallas. That's interesting. When did Reynolds tell his story about buying the jewelry? Before or after her visit? After the visit. All right with you if I come by in the morning to see Reynolds? I'm sure, Herb, but listen. The assistant DA called this afternoon, and it looks like they're going to indict Reynolds. Thanks, John. Did you enjoy your drink, sir? What? Oh, uh, very much. Thank you. My faith in Fred Reynolds had been stronger than his confidence in me. I had to persuade him to trust me as much as he trusted the person he was shielding. You forgot to mention that the Golden Grill is an upper strata lonely hearts club. Herb, how'd you like the manager? Oh, does she like potted plants? Oh, Herb, listen, hold on a minute, will you please? She expressed complete disinterest in Mr. Reynolds, neglecting to inform me that she'd just paid him a visit. I wonder if it's just coincidence that Reynolds came up with this story about buying the jewelry just after she'd seen him. Well, ask Reynolds. He's the man with the answers. 
You know, we just opened the new recreation yard today. He's down there gambling with the rest of the little land. Yeah, this will get you through. I understand Miss Dallas paid you a visit. Why didn't you tell me about her? Gloria had nothing to do with this. Gloria? You're on a first name basis, huh? You've only known her a month. What do you know about her, Fred? Well, I know she's a fine person. And I know she's been supporting her sick mother. Really, Reynolds? Her mother died ten years ago. That's a lie. The lieutenant doesn't lie. But Gloria said she needed the money for her mother's operation. Boy, have you bought the Brooklyn Bridge lately? Fred, I saw Gloria yesterday afternoon. She wasn't interested in you. She didn't even try to defend you. She doesn't even believe you bought the jewelry from the customer. And I don't lie. Well, that's the story she advised me to tell. Yeah, Lieutenant. I bought the Brooklyn Bridge. Gloria asked me to sell the jewelry. I didn't know it was hot. She said she was embarrassed to go into a hot shop. But she knew which one to send me into. I took the money to her apartment, went back to my place, and the police were waiting. Reynolds, were you really going to take the rap for her? I don't know. I kept quiet after you arrested me, waiting for her to tell me what it was all about. She said she didn't know the stuff was stolen either, but if I said I'd bought them and stuck to it, a good lawyer could get me off. She said if that didn't work, she'd, she'd go and confess to the cops, even if the news killed her mother. Boy, her mother must be spinning. Reynolds, do you have any idea why that pawnbroker turned you in? Gloria recommended him. I guess she thought I could pull it off. I gave him a bad time. I guess I didn't act enough like a thief, huh? You've given yourself a bad time, too. But you're going to be all right, Fred. I wish I were sure he'll be all right. Gloria denies that story. It will be his word against hers. You know, Herb, when you were in the office, I was waiting for a report. I ran a check of burglaries with similar MOs in nearby communities, and a number of the people were having dinner at the Golden Grill at the time their homes were being ransacked. We can make something of that, John, if you let me. Good. Good evening. How long will you be, sir? We're going to have dinner a couple of hours, I guess. If they'll cash my check, I left my wallet home in the bar. A night on the town, and I need my cash home. I know. Next, you'll run out of gas. Oh, such a lovely present. I hate to part with it. It'll be safe for you for a couple of hours, won't it? Yes, sir. Thanks. Good evening, Mr. Maris. Miss? Good evening. You suppose you could make me two drinks as well as you made that cooler yesterday? Thank you. I'm glad I know the manager. Would you get us a quiet table where we can have a nice, leisurely dinner? And will you cash my check so I can pay for it? I uh, left my wallet home. A likely story. But I think I can take a chance with you, Mr. Merritt. Charlie, will you send their drinks to the booth? Right over here. Thanks. Make it quick, boy. Why don't you get my stove? I'm a little chilly. Excuse me. May 
I have that birthday so? Certainly. I really did. Forget it. Thanks. Now everybody knows I left my money home. Weston's gone. The other officer's still there. Maybe you just went to get a hamburger. Eat your dinner. Get the door. All right, spread eagle. Drop the flashlight. Well, what do you know? Maris's keys, the parking attendant, you. Gloria Dallas. I hate to interrupt your party, but there's a telephone call for Mr. Maris. You can take it at the bar. Thanks. Excuse me. Charlie, phone, please. Sure. Thanks. Paris. It worked out fine, Hart. Would you bring him by here, or shall we meet you somewhere? You just keep on enjoying the atmosphere till I get there. Long. Cash, you can't be traced. I have a feeling that cash has already been traced. That was the talk Western. Well, what did he have? It's a delicious dinner, Miss Dallas. We're enjoying it very much. Oh, I'm glad. I was telling Mr. Maris I sometimes buy a drink when there's a big check. Would you have one? Would you like to see the wine room? I'll treat to a bottle of anything you choose. Sounds wonderful. Come on, Herb. Look around. We're very proud of our wine list. We have wines from every country in the world, and every bottle is a vintage year. Mr. Maris? I'm very sorry this is necessary. It wouldn't be if stupid here had used his head. What about Fred Reynolds? Well, he was stupid, too, but in a different way. The only thing he did wrong was fall in love with me. Her jewelry's paste. Take her purse and then search him. We'll lock them in here. No. Give me her purse. All right, you two. Joe, take care of him. Sergeant Hines, I'm going to see to it that you're personally commended for this. I'd rather have the rest of the night off. Oh, I'm sure the lieutenant's going to arrange that. Shall we finish dinner? Check your hat, sir. Hi, Mr. Merritt. Fred. I suppose you've heard. The Golden Grill has given my job back. Well, I not only heard, I plan to collect my fee. Somebody over there owes me a bottle of wine. <laughs> 